Hey there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And for those of you who are new here, hi, I'm Amy. I'm a full-time reseller, primarily on the Poshmark app, but I also dabble in other online platforms and I sell locally. Today I'll be doing another ship with me video. I've been having so much fun doing these videos and it seems like you guys are really enjoying them. So in these videos, if you haven't uh, seen them before, I go day to day and I share the different items that I'm shipping out. I give tips. I talk about uh, how much I sold them for, what my profit was, all sorts of different things. So you want to be sure to watch all the way to the end because I always have interesting and unique items that you can learn from and help you keep your eyes out for different things things to look for to make money on at the thrift stores. So let's get started. The first item is this vintage Black Hills Gold cross pendant. Now this is very dainty. Hopefully you guys can see that. Just a tiny little cross. And I did end up doing a pretty deep discount on this. I had it listed for $109, but it had been listed for a little while. A buyer offered me, I can't remember what they started out offering me, but we settled on $63. I had paid just $5 for this at an estate sale. So that after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my net profit $45.40. Overall, I am happy with that. If you haven't watched my videos before, I use these cute little plastic boxes for some of my jewelry. I get them at the dollar store and they're actually for food storage, but I like them because I think people could potentially reuse them. And I always like to use stuff that can be reused instead of thrown away. And I have gotten a lot of great feedback from my buyers saying that uh, they really like these little boxes. So that makes me happy. I am using ribbon, but I don't buy new ribbon. I only pick it up when I see it at estate sales and thrift stores. Again, that is just to try to reduce waste and you know, only use items that, well, I don't know, just to, just to reduce waste. So, okay, there you go. That's how that little box looks. The next item is kind of an, or is a really interesting piece, actually. It is this vintage, very ornate brooch. And it has this kind of coin detail and rhinestone detail on it. I thought that was really unique. This was a full price sale. I had it listed for $49 and someone bought it outright. It had been listed for a few months. Um, but you know, with jewelry, like I've said before, it doesn't bother me if it takes a little while for it to sell uh, because it doesn't take up much space. And usually I don't pay high prices for it. Oh, looks like I am out of ribbon, so I will do that off camera. So like I said, it sold for $49. I paid $2 for it in a state sale. So that made my profit $37.20. I'm thrilled with that. I'm kind of surprised that that sold for full price, but I'm happy about it. So the next item is this pair of Sorel boots. I hadn't seen anything like this before. Uh, they're very unique. They have wool insets on them. They can be zipped down and then folded over so this yellow portion shows. I thought they were pretty cool. I don't know that these are fully waterproof because they're not marked and because of the wool I just wasn't sure how they would have you know, made that waterproof. But anyways, these were another full price sale. I picked these up at a thrift store for $5. I looked at comps and I listed these towards the high end of comps. So I listed them for $75. And like I said, they sold for full price. So that's very exciting. They also only took 
one to two weeks to sell. So that is also great. It is the week of November 21st. I do film my videos in advance a little bit. So as you'll see here, I have another pair of boots that I sold and it really seems like I am currently selling winter, winter weather type items. So I apologize that my videos are a little bit behind. I just do that so that if I get sick or I wanna take a week off, I have a video ready to publish. Uh, because YouTube, the YouTube algorithm really drives on staying consistent and uploading a video the same day every, every week, so. Okay, so after Plush Fees and My Cost of Goods, that made my profit $55. Another great profit. You guys know me, I would rather have bigger profits if I can and work smarter, not harder. So the next item is this Patagonia Better Sweater, and this is the pullover. This is a men's size small. I picked up two of these at the Goodwill and I decided to keep one of them for myself. This one seemed to run a little bit smaller than the other one, but I did include measurements in my listings. Let's see, this what I believe this was another full price sale. Wow, that's three for this week, that's awesome. So I had it listed for $59. I had paid, I had paid up for this. I paid $15 at the Goodwill for this. Oftentimes I will pay up for Patagonia because it is a trendy brand that is good quality and it holds its resale value. So typically it will uh, sell relatively quickly and for decent prices. That isn't always true though. I have a couple pieces in my closet that have been sitting forever. I don't know what the deal is, but sometimes they don't sell right away, but typically they do. So like I sold, said, it sold for $59. I paid 15 so that after posh fees, that made my total profit $32.20. I'm happy with that. That is a nice little profit. Okay, the next item, I'm a little, uh, I'm happy. I'm a little surprised about these. So these are some of the Sorrel, Sorrel wedge boots. Uh, but these have, I don't know if you can see that, but it looks like they've been repaired. They have pretty heavy wear. So it looks like they were restitched uh, right here on both boots. I did indicate that in the listing. I picked these up at the bins and that's one of the reasons that I still picked them up and actually I didn't realize that they had been repaired when I purchased them but um, I had only paid about two dollars for the boots so I thought All right, I can still make a profit on them and they ended up selling for $32 I think this was on offer a 10% off offer with discounted shipping so after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $20.92. For those of you who watch every week, I, like I say, I like to keep my profits above $20 uh, with the amount of work that goes into sourcing items, li photographing, listing, cleaning, packaging, all the things. I think that I need to make a minimum of $20 to make it worth my time. Now, it doesn't always work out like that as you've seen, but that's what I shoot for. Okay, well, that is all for today, but I will be back in a few days to, oh, actually, I forgot. I had another uh, item sell on Facebook Marketplace over the weekend, and it was a rocking chair. I had picked it up at a yard sale for a friend of mine who was having a baby. It was really cute. It was kind of mid-century style. 
and it was only $40 at the sale. So I thought if she doesn't want it, then I will put it on Facebook Marketplace and sell it. And that is what I did. I had it listed for $150 and the buyer offered me a hundred, which was a little bit less than I wanted to get, but I was motivated to sell it. So I said, okay, come get it. So they came and paid a hundred dollars cash. It's Facebook Marketplace, local pickup, so there's no fees. So that might made my profit $60. I'm not going to complain a bit about that. Uh, in when I sell locally, I especially furniture, I always say um, that they need to pick it up, they need to move it and load it. So I don't include any of that kind of service in my uh, sales, and I'm very specific about that in the listing. Um, one of the reasons is that I've hurt my back over the years moving so much furniture, and so I just try and you know keep it to a minimum how much furniture I move and people tend to not have a problem with that. So that is all for today. Like I said, I will see you in a couple days. Thanks for watching. Hi again, it's another day and I have some more interesting items to ship out. So the first item is this fun vintage Helly Henson. It's kind of a raincoat anorak jacket. And I picked it up because of the vibrant colors, the styling, um, it has like a half zip. I just loved all of the bright contrast colors. Uh, here, I'll show you the tag too. I believe this is from the uh, 1980s or 90s. Could be a little bit newer too. I'm, sometimes it's kind of hard to tell with these. I wasn't sure if this was men's or women's or if it was, you know, more of a unisex piece, I think maybe that's what it was meant to be to uh, begin with, but I thought it was great either way. And I did indicate uh, that in the listing and I stated what the size was on the tag and I included measurements. I believe I did list this under women's though. And I picked it up at a thrift store for just $4. I was pretty excited to find it for that uh, price. I probably would have even paid a little more for it just because the colors were so uh, great. I've done really pretty well in the past with these vibrant colored uh, anoraks or ski coats or um, ski suits. I've mentioned that recently in another video. Um, but I listed this for $79 and I sent out offers to likers with discounted shipping and a buyer counter offered me 60, which I thought was a great price for this. So I happily accepted. And after my cost of goods and posh fees that made my profit $44. I love finding these vintage pieces and, you know, giving them another life because you know, they, they made pieces a little bit better uh, to last before. And so it's nice for someone else to get some more wear out of them. Okay, so the next item is this pair of very dainty earrings. And these are tiny Black Hills gold earrings. I think I'm just going to do one so that I don't risk dropping that. They kind of look like poinsettias or little flowers or snowflakes maybe. I picked these up at an estate sale and there was a whole bag of them actually. I think there was probably, there was three pairs and then like six singles and I paid five dollars for the whole bag. So I'm going to say I paid less than a dollar for these earrings. Let's see, I think I had these listed for fifty nine dollars and a buyer, I sent out 20% off offers to Likers with discounted shipping and the buyer said she missed my original offer so she counter offered me $44, which was about the same as the offer that I sent her with discounted shipping. So I was happy to accept that. Uh, now these did not have the earring backs with them and I did note that in the listing Sometimes I will include new backs, but because these were so tiny, um, I didn't think the new backs would be quite right for them. And did I already say, I, I mentioned it in the listing that there was no backs included. Okay, so 
So they sold for $44. I paid less than a dollar for them. So that made my profit $34.20. That makes me happy. I think they've only been listed a month or two maybe. So that's also a pretty good, pretty quick turnaround. I'm not gonna complain about that. I did forget to get out shipping deals for this. So I will get those down. So did I say my profit was $34.20? I guess I'm a little discombobulated right now. It's the day before Thanksgiving and we've got a lot going on. So my mind is uh, sort of elsewhere, but I hope you guys all have are having a great holiday season. I know this will come out a little bit after uh, Thanksgiving. Okay, the next item is this really pretty amethyst ring and it has this really interesting stone cut. It's kind of a cabochon, so it's polished on the top and then it's faceted underneath like a diamond. So I just thought this was a really neat ring. However, apparently other people did not because this took over two years to sell. I don't, I just don't know why it took so long. I think maybe I had it priced too high. I think I started out by pricing it at $79 or $89 and I had uh, reduced it and then I sent out 20% off offers to Likers and this buyer came back and offered me $38 which was less than I wanted to get because I had paid $15 for this. I just thought it was really unique. Um, so probably wouldn't pay up for something like this again. Uh, but she offered me 38 and I counter offered with 44 and she accepted that. So I think that's actually probably a pretty fair price for this piece. I just thought it was more unique than that, but apparently I was wrong. <laughs> So like I said, I paid $15. So after my cost of goods and posh fees, that made my profit $20.20. Not what I had anticipated for paying up and paying $15, but I still made over $20, which uh, you know is my, my goal to at least make $20 on items. So I shouldn't complain about that at all. Okay, the next item that sold is this interesting vintage bolo tie. And it has this carved, uh, they call it a puffin. It's kind of like a, um, kind of looks like a penguin, but it's a little bit different. This was not listed very long at all, um, maybe a week or two. And I did start out by, uh, by listing this at, I think 45 or 44 and the buyer offered me 30. I kind of wanted to get a little bit more for this because it did have that carving, but bolo ties don't always sell that great for me, so I just decided to go ahead and accept that offer. I had paid $4 for this at a thrift store, actually at the same thrift store that I got that Helly Henson jacket at. I think I got it the same, same trip as that. So I maybe could have gotten more for this piece, but sometimes I'm just in the mood to turn and burn stuff and uh, make a little money. So like I said, it sold for 30, I paid $4. So after posh fees and my cost of goods that made my profit $20. Another nice solid little sale. Happy to move it in and move it out not have it, you know, sit around and wait to get five more dollars or whatnot. So I'm not, not gonna complain about that. Okay, I'm gonna put this one in one of these boxes. And then the next item is this cool vintage woven leather belt. Of course, it wouldn't be one of my ship with me videos without a belt sale. I just really thought this was unique with the leather buff buckle, excuse me. And then I liked the braiding or weaving on this and it's a really, it's a wider piece. So the buyer 
started off by offering me $18. And you know how I am usually, I'm a little, I'm pretty negotiable on my belts, but I just really thought this was an unusual piece. So I counter offered to $25 and they accepted that. So that makes me happy. I think that's a reasonable price for an, an all leather belt like this. I had paid $3 for this at a thrift store. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $17. Overall, I am happy with that. And this is, you know, a nice quality belt that the buyer should be able to get uh, quite a bit of wear, more wear out of. So that is all for today, but I will be back uh, in a couple days to share what else I ship out. And um, because it's Thanksgiving and just because I am thankful, I just want to say how thankful I am for, uh, boy, I'm just kind of a little emotional today, but uh, for all of my subscribers and all of you guys that are continue, continuing to watch and leave kind comments, um, it's really important. It's really important to me and it's really important to other creators and YouTubers. So um, do it Do it for all the people that you enjoy watching uh, because this can be kind of hard for us to show up like this. You know, if we're having a rough day or we're busy or whatnot, um, it just, it, it can take a lot sometimes. So I am so very, very thankful for all of you. And if you've been watching my videos and you haven't subscribed yet, I would love to invite you to subscribe. Uh, I plan on continuing to do this. I'm really enjoying it and enjoying the connect the connections that I'm making with people and I'm having fun. So also, if you like this video, if you could give it a thumbs up and comment down below, all those things really help me out. All right, I will see you guys in a couple of days. Hi there, it's a couple days later and it's been really pretty great couple of days. I'm pretty excited about a few of the sales I have. So the first uh, sale was a bundle of two items and it's these two dainty little heart pendants and there you go. Can you see this? This one has kind of a filigree work to it. And this one is a puffy, uh, what do they call it? Engraved piece. And these are both 14 karat gold. I picked them up at different estate, well, one at an estate sale and one from a jewelry buyout of an estate sale. So when I say that, um, usually it's someone who has contacted me, has heard that I buy jewelry and they've contacted me and I'll buy the whole lot of jewelry instead of picking through uh, piece by piece. So for the little filigree one, I paid $3 at an estate sale. And for the other one, I paid 15. Sometimes I end up having to pay up a little bit more when I do those jewelry buyouts. Um, yeah, I, I just, uh, I feel like if I'm making an offer, I want to be making a fair offer based on what I think the value is. I don't ever want someone to, you know, bring something like that to me and feel like I sort of cheated them. Usually what I do is I offer 40 to 50% of what the lowest amount that I think it will sell for is. So I do list items higher than that lowest amount, uh, but I only pay, you know, based on the worst case scenario. And I kind of explain that to people uh, too when I'm buying. So anyways, I had this originally listed, one was listed for $149, the filigree one, just because it was really unique. And the other one was listed for $89. Uh, the buyer first off started offering me $90 on one of them. And then she must have been looking through my closet and found the other one. I was kind of on the fence about if I wanted to accept that $90. So I was thinking about it. And then she added them both to a bundle and offered me $192. I thought that was great, seeing as uh, the com combined cost of goods was $18. 
So I happily accepted that and that made my profit $135.60. You guys know me, I love a big profit. I am going to put these in a box just because the value is a little bit higher and I'm gonna add some stuffing so it doesn't rattle around. These, usually I ship my jewelry in these padded flat rate envelopes, but I have had one occasion where um, this got caught in the machine and it tore it open and the item went missing. So only one out of probably a thousand that has, that, that has happened to, but I would really hate for it to happen on a high higher dollar sale. Okay, so the next item isn't quite as exciting, but every little bit counts, like I said. So this is a vintage clover brooch and it kind of looks like it's carved jade, but it's actually just a resin or a plastic or something like that. But it's a really cute little piece nonetheless. I had this listed for, I think $32. Yeah, that would be right. And I sent out 10% off offers to likers with discounted shipping and a buyer accepted. I had paid $2 for this at an estate sale, so that made my profit $17.72. I'm not gonna complain about that at all. Sometimes, you know, I'll pick up these little pieces if they're affordable so that I can have some lower cost items in my closet for uh, people who maybe can't afford a higher dollar item. So I think this is a cute little piece. It may be someone treating themselves or it may be a Christmas gift for someone. I do feel like I sell uh, more brooches and jewelry before the holidays and in January after the holidays when people are spending their Christmas money and treating themselves. So if you have, um, sorry about that. If you have jewelry pieces that you haven't listed yet or other items that people would buy for themselves, I would get those listed because for me, January is my best uh, sales month of the year typically. I think a lot of people get Christmas money and then they start buying themselves uh, things to treat them themselves. So that's just a little tip. I'm not sure if that will work for everyone or not, but I always try and get as much listed before fourth quarter and first quarter. Okay, the next item is another pair of these vintage Christian G Dior demo glasses. And I don't know if you can see that, but right here it says Christian Dior on the frame. And then it says CD on the side here. Now I have been selling these uh, frames for a little bit more, but this was just kind of a basic style with not much detail. So I have them listed for $99 and the buyer offered me 60. I decided to go ahead and accept that because I thought that was reasonable and these were just kind of a basic style. If you haven't watched my videos before, I bought a whole lot of these, 30 of them for $5 a piece at the estate sale of an optometrist. So like I said, these are just demo glasses like you would see sitting out on a shelf when you go to the optometrist. So the lenses are just clear and they have quite a few scratches on them. I do indicate that all in the listing and I'm basically selling these with the intent that people will have the lenses replaced with sunglasses um, or with their prescription. Okay, so like I said, these sold for 60, I paid five. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $43. Not quite as good as some of the other pairs that I've sold, um, but I'm not gonna complain about a $43 profit at all. Okay, the next item sold very quickly in less than 48 hours. I always do really well with Carhartt in general, and then especially these fleece lined or blanket lined, uh, the kind of plaid wool 
lined pieces. So I always pick them up and I will pay up for Carhartt oftentimes because it does typically sell quickly. So I paid $13 for this and I listed it for $69. I got multiple likes within the first 24 hours, I think over 20 likes. And another person started out by offering me like $40 and we went back and forth and they had come up to 50. And again, I was kind of considering the offer. So I let it sit there overnight because it had only been listed for less than 24 hours at that point. And then this morning, someone came along and offered me 60. So I went ahead and accepted that because I had sent out 10% uh, off offers to Likers with discounted shipping and that came out to about $60. So I'm sure most of you know this, uh, but Poshmark has that feature where if you have if you have liked an item and another person makes an offer on it, then you get the notification that an offer was made on this. So that's kind of why I was waiting a little bit to see if anybody else would come in and make an offer on it. And it worked out this time. Sometimes it doesn't, but okay. So like I said, it sold for 60. I paid $12.99 or $13. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $35. Not a huge profit, but a very good profit and very quick. So that's kind of what I um, go with for Carhartt because I know it will usually sell quick. Uh, so I am okay paying up a little bit for it. Okay, the next item is this lambskin leather mini skirt. Now I don't always, well usually I'll pick up vintage leather skirts. But this was Will Smith, which is often sold at TJ Maxx and Marshalls. But I picked this one up be specifically because it was lambskin leather, not just uh, regular leather. And lambskin is so soft and luxurious feeling. This did have some kind of divots from where a hanger was on there, uh, but I don't really think they're that noticeable. And I did mention it in the listing. So let's see, I had this listed for $39 and the buyer offered me 30. I thought that was pretty reasonable because I had picked this up at one of those fill the bag sales that our, one of our local churches does. That's the other reason I bought this because at those sales, if you haven't heard about them before, um, they charge $5 to fill a giant garbage bag full of stuff. So I paid less than a dollar for this, so it's definitely worth the risk. I would say this took probably four, five, four or five months to sell. So it wasn't a quick sale, and I did anticipate that it would take a little bit of time. But uh, because I paid so little for it, that was okay. And after Poshmark fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $23. I'm not gonna complain about that a bit. Nice little profit and a low investment. So that is all for this week. Uh, I hope you guys are ha all having a happy holiday season and I will be back next week to share what else I sell. See you then.